SMP spokesperson Deirdre Robb. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Leader will no doubt be disappointed that, despite it containing some welcome news about prepayment metres, for instance, a tribute to the many months of campaigning on this issue by my honourable friend, the member for Glasgow North East, that I won't be opening with fulsome praise for her Chancellor's budget. For why is this? Despite the largest fall in living standards and disposable income for decades uh, being endured by the vast majority throughout the UK now, instead of holding out a helping hand to those folks, he's just rewarded the wealthiest with a hefty leg up the pensions ladder. And instead of the investment desperately needed for cheaper, cleaner renewables, we get billions ploughed into nuclear. So instead, I'll be asking her for a debate on broken British dreams and sunk hopes. And it's not yep. a country and western song, Mr Speaker. The £20 billion over 20 years the Chancellor has announced for nuclear and carbon capture projects won't support retrofitting homes to permanently cut those energy costs for households, or much cheaper onshore wind developments, or tidal energy, or green hydrogen, or heat pumps, or district heating, or solar. It won't win the race across the globe for investment into those industries. Again, the US and the EU, amongst many others. Yep. The Treasurer and the Chancellor don't appear capable of thinking outside their outdated energy sources box on this. Yep. What they give us instead is the reclassification of nuclear so as to receive the same investment opportunities as renewables. Nuclear, Mr Speaker. There is not one successful evolutionary power reactor, reactor project in the world, and we still have no real solution to the safe disposal of waste that remains radioactive for centuries. Nuclear Nuclear plants take years to build and always run over budget and over time. Why is this government so thorough to nuclear when there are cheaper, safer, proven alternatives yeah, yeah. that will bring us to net zero targets much more quickly? And I must add, why no more support for tidal energy, which can provide a clean and reliable baseload and which has vast potential in Scotland? We already have the world's leading wave and tidal energy test centre based in Orkney, while companies like Nova Innovation in my constituency are pioneers in this technology. The UK government's actions suggest, again, it is not taking this climate crisis seriously, Mr Speaker. The leader joined forces years ago with Director Richard Curtis to champion the, UK's, uh, sorry, the UN's Sustainable Development Goal targets when she was International Development Secretary. When I've asked her about environmental issues in the past, though, she's avoided the questions altogether. Is she still committed to and leading on these issues within her government or not? Yeah. Leader. Um, well, thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. Um, I know that uh, there would be no mention of the £320 million of extra funding for Scotland, uh, the investment zone and other measures to benefit households and businesses in Scotland. I welcome those things, even if the SNP does not. This week, um, she asks me about... Uh, measures to assist uh, cost of, uh, alleviate cost of living and uh, help improve uh, living standards. Uh, we have a £94 billion package that was uh, announced in the uh, budget. Uh, she does not like what we have done on uh, pensions with regard to key professions such as doctors, experienced teachers. I am very sorry to, to see that not welcomed, as I think it would be welcomed by uh, many in those professions and would uh, tempt them to stay uh, in the workplace. Uh, with regard to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, uh, this, department, uh, this uh, government has not just left those with departments. We have put them at the heart of government. They are in the annual reports of uh, every government uh, department. We uh, report against them. She talks about uh, carbon capture and tidal energy. I would remind her that uh, the Treasury uh, actually had a carve-out uh, for tidal energy. We recognise that these emerging technologies will find it difficult to uh, compete with other uh, uh, renewables, more, more advanced and more uh, developed technology. Uh, we have done that because we believe that tidal is part of the answer and we want that technology to develop. With regard to carbon capture, I am sorry that uh, she is uh, she's not keen on the £41 million that we have invested into the Scottish cluster. I just gently remind her the SNP promised to invest £80 million, uh, and I do not think they have invested uh, anything uh, yet, Mr Speaker, which is very unfortunate. It is exactly from the uh, playbook of look at what we say, not what we do uh, politics. She wants to, us to listen to concerns, and her colleagues this week have raised issues about lack of scrutiny, but not, she does not want us to look at their attendance record in debates. We have heard her 
raise her dismay at de divisive language, but she doesn't want us to clock the uh, hate fuel bile that comes from many SNP uh, uh, campaigners at anyone who loves the union or dares to challenge them on any of their policies. She wants to preach about offshore tax havens and offshore schemes, but wants us to discount the use of such schemes, as we've discovered this week by the Scottish Government, as we have seen in the CalMAC tax scandal. And she wants us to listen to the leadership candidates in her party saying they can be trusted on health care that they'll turbocharge the economy and are brimming with ideas, but doesn't want us to recognise that they have crushed health, stifled growth, and need to set up commission after commission to find uh, some ideas. She would also like us to see the SNP as a champion of democracy and not look at their rejection of the referendum result. Does she not recognise the extraordinary occurrence this week of membership candidates in the leadership, the, the candidates in the leadership contest having to write a letter in order to try and guarantee a free and fair election. If the candidates were called Mo, Larry and Curly, it couldn't get any more slapstick. And given the SNP's previous form and contempt for democracy, I wonder if this contest uh, they are going to actually adhere to the, to the result at all. Will the candidates try and test the result in the courts, cry foul, or attempt a rerun of the process on their own and claim it's legitimate? I'm afraid we've got two more weeks of this, but we know the outcome already. Whoever wins, Scotland will lose.